Good Monday morning, Michael Clark here with BAM Weather, take number 54. We're going to try and do another video for you here this morning. We've had some technical difficulties this morning. Don't you love Mondays? <clears throat> it's 9.30 a.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about the potential of uh, an outbreak of severe weather today across Iowa, Minnesota, portions of Wisconsin, and then a threat shifting east across the Ohio Valley. And then we're also going to target the potential for some heavy uh, flooding rain concerns down into the south central plains moving east uh, with this front in general. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't. Share it with a friend if you like it. And uh, don't share it if you don't. How about that? Uh, here's a look here this morning at radar. And we can kind of see what's going on. We've got this big system that's sprawled out across the area. It's bringing a morning round of thunderstorms to Minnesota portions of Iowa. But the focus will shift later today to the potential at at least severe weather. I want to show you the severe risk here from Clarity, and uh, we're able to kind of interrogate that. It's an interactive look at the severe weather forecast. There's a moderate risk across southeastern Minnesota, western Wisconsin, and northern Iowa, primarily for an environment conducive of strong to potentially uh, intense tornadoes here uh, in the area you see here. This basically means there's a 15 percent chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a point. And then the black lines you see through it, that's the potential for significant tornadoes, which is, you know, EF, EF2, EF3 or stronger, if you will. Um, the other big attendant risk today is the hail, the potential for some significant hail, some large hail. Um, greater certainly than an inch, two inches in diameter wouldn't be out of the question. Some very large hail possible today. The damaging wind risk is there, albeit not as, not as elevated as... Um, we would see here with the other two threats. So nonetheless, a moderate uh, risk for severe weather. So we want to take that seriously today. And we're going to kind of, we're going to dive into the details of that forecast here in just a moment. I do want to talk real quick about just the observed rainfall here over the weekend. Um, folks, you know, out in the central plains needing the rain, some of you got it. We're going to change the color of the map here a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see. There you go. Um, some of you got it there across South Dakota, northern Nebraska. Others here across central, southern Nebraska. Most of Iowa, a lot of Kansas missed out on some of the rain for the exception of south central Kansas. Heavy, heavy rain went through the uh, panhandle of Texas. And again, across central and south and southern Oklahoma. And looking at this, you know, just over the last seven days, again, this, this tool all available here in Clarity, but seven-day rain totals in north central Texas over eight inches there on the state line of Kansas and Oklahoma over eight inches. So it's been wet. And you've been wet in Kansas and Iowa over the last seven days. Central Iowa, three inches. West central Kansas there, over five inches of rain. We look at our current soil moisture percentile index, and we're looking for kind of that top four to five inches of soil moisture. Um, how much is in the, pro the, the, the profile there and how much moisture is in the soil. And the areas we, we continue to watch that need more rainfall, that need more moisture, would, would be an area I talked a lot about last week that's kind of getting what I like to call sneaky dry, if you will, across portions of Illinois, northern Indiana, southern Michigan, and southern Wisconsin. We need the rain here. It, it, there needs to be some rain come down. And then we need the rain across North Dakota. All right, we've seen some reprieve here recently. Uh, but we need more, okay? Going forward, over the next 10 days, with perspective to the growing season, we are going to run above normal on the growing degree units. That will help, but we're going to need some moisture, so let's talk about that. I'm going to show you our forecast models from Synoptic, and I can turn on the time bar here and kind of get you to see what we're talking about. We're going to go to the latest run of the HRRR, which, by the way, if you like to analyze weather models, Synoptic, we're running a free beta trial right now. You can go to synopticwx.com and sign up and utilize the, the model data. All right, so again, the main area I'm really talking about right now, at least for today, is, is going to come right here, all right, across uh, this north central Iowa, western Wisconsin, and southeastern uh, Minnesota there. All right. The morning round coming through. All right. That's that's scooting through the area right now. And then we're going to kind of this is Eastern time, by the way, because I'm my time zone is set up for Eastern. Uh, but you can see that line of thunderstorms developing 
our broken line of storms kind of developing here from Minneapolis south into northern portions of Iowa. The concern is, is any of these thunderstorms that can develop are going to have the potential to rotate and, and be pretty nasty. The environment's very conducive for strong storms. The previous run of the HRRR uh, even had suggestions at, at isolated individual supercells being possible. In fact, you can kind of see that here across central Iowa. The hook-like na nature uh, feature there um, in these cells this evening. This is 8 p.m. central time. And so these would certainly be concerning, have the potential to put down, you know, strong tornadoes with this. In fact, if we go and look at the, the uh, updraft helicity swaths, um, we can see where the model is trying to depict some longer track supercells that may be capable of hail and strong tornadoes here across Iowa and portions of southern Minnesota and western uh, Wisconsin. Okay. A look at just total rain from today with this. A lot of this, these models may struggle with specific precipitation amounts as these supercell storms, uh, if they become a little bit more robust and have a little bit more moisture, um, they may produce more rainfall. These may be more of a low precip type supercell if they do form, which means you may have a really nice visual of these storms, um, but they may also come and, and pack a punch as well. Um, some favored model guidance, again, the area where rain might be underdone in the forecast is across north central Iowa and, and western uh, Wisconsin there, far southern Minnesota. There could be more isolated heavier rain totals in here from those thunderstorms that, that will fire. We'll have to keep, keep you posted on that. All right, as we go forward, we're going to watch the severe threat shift east on day two. I'm going to show you tomorrow's outlook. And you can see that slight risk from... Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, southern Missouri, in through the Ohio Valley, and an enhanced risk there in eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, and western New York. Okay, the tornado risk at two percent or there out there tomorrow. The big thing tomorrow is probably going to be the damaging wind and hail concern across eastern Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, and maybe even some significant hail as noted here in that outlook. But let's time that out. Let's take a look at some favored model guidance as this shifts east tomorrow. Again, we're going to start to see thunderstorm activity develop perhaps as early as, as 8, 9 o'clock in the morning here across the slight risk area. And then you can see some stronger storm indications near noon across the Ohio Valley and getting up there into the enhanced risk area as well tomorrow evening. Um, kind of a parade of rain and thunderstorms. Look at this back out here across Texas and Oklahoma. Look at the heavy, heavy rain suggestions popping up tomorrow which is why I want to direct your attention here to the day two excessive rainfall forecast from the Weather Prediction Center. That is a moderate risk for excessive rain once again over central Oklahoma, Wichita, uh, Edmond, Tulsa area, a moderate risk for day two heavy rains. And the, the, the data is hinting at this right now. Um, you can see the, the training-like nature of the heavy thunderstorms over that moderate risk area. Um, pretty nasty. All right, in regards to that, just out through, uh, look at that, another wave, uh, late Tuesday into Wednesday morning. So just uh, just some really, uh, you know, potential for some serious flooding the next two days. That, sh that threat shifts a little east into eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, day three. And then as the system continues to move eastward, there's a widespread marginal risk for heavy rains across the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes by day four. You know, look at this. As this continues to progress off to the east look at the rain the widespread rain that will break out here Wednesday into Thursday this is Wednesday afternoon late Wednesday night now getting into Thursday morning look at the widespread rain again breaking out really across regions that need it uh, remember the area I just talked about where it was dry well we've got some rainfall being possible there shown by the latest um, high resolution computer model here I'm showing you so this is an 84-hour rainfall forecast, all right? First things first, that's tonight. That's the isolated rainfall totals, inch and a half, two inches. Go down here to the south. This model is, ex is extraordinarily aggressive. It could be a little overdone, but maybe not. With two days in a row of, of flash flooding being possible, it's indicating six to 10 inches of rain being possible once again across central Oklahoma. Not good. 
They, they had this last week, if you remember. Um, so some very, very heavy rains possible in this area here with, with significant flooding on the table. And then those heavy rains spread east. Uh, and this forecast here ends valid Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Again, isolated totals here across Illinois, Indiana of two inches of rain. All right, so something to keep in mind in that regard. So real quick, I'll show you just the extended forecast here, looking at the, at the GFS computer model, with the next rainfall chance outside of the next 84 hours. We'll zoom this out just a little bit here. Um, for those of you wanting to get out into the field, get work done, this is obviously probably going to bring a little bit of a delay. But the nice thing is, is for the weekend, high pressure settles in. Big old 1020 area high pressure here, Saturday, Sunday, probably sunny skies, nice weather, no rain to be found, no big storm system really to, to target until possibly later next week. And even at that distance, that's pretty far out. So that big blue H you see means nice weather for the weekend and uh, a reprieve in the rainfall, right? So. Let's look at the, real quick, week one, week two, you've got week one on the left, all right? Yeah, precipitation percent of normal rainfall forecast. You can see out here across the central plains and the Great Lakes where we're targeted to be above normal precip. Week two, we're drier into the east, potentially wetter in the central, south central plains. But note the theme with the warmth. It's warm everywhere and it's excessively warm, possibly in the Midwest, the Great Lakes in week two. There is a risk it could be a little bit cooler in the south and east as a few fronts will still work through the area. Something to keep in mind there. I do want to show you real quick the latest forecast trends for the May outlook, and then we'll wrap up this video today. Look at the last three runs of the CFS monthly and how suggestive it is for how dry it could be across the Midwest, the grain belt for May. Very wet South Central U.S., Texas, Oklahoma. Not good really. Those those folks really don't need any more rain. Uh, but May it could be rather dry in the Midwest in the Ohio Valley and wetter in the South Central Plains and warm. The idea right now is that everybody would be running pretty much above normal for the month of May. But drier trends developing in the grain belt certainly going to be something that we're that we're focused on. So, hey guys, make sure if you're interested in a daily detailed forecast, access uh, to clarity to the system I was just showing you, um, you can you can head on over real quickly to bamwx.com and you can either check out the free trial that BAM has to offer for clarity, um, where you go to get instant access, or you can try out the new clarity home package. It's $99 a year um, and you can test it out yourself and you might like it. Maybe you want to upgrade. Regardless, thanks for watching today. Make sure you share it with a friend. We'll have more of a, of a detailed dive into the extended forecast discussions as we get into probably Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow's outlook, again, will focus on more heavy rain and severe weather here as it shifts east. Talk to you soon.